My name is CJ Anaya, and today we are going to talk about prologues. A few of you were a little confused as to why we have them, um, when we're supposed to use them. So I'm just going to go over a few things that you can consider. Um, it's not really too difficult. You just need to know when to use them and why, basically. Um, so just uh, for, for those of you who are new to this, a prologue is, is a separate introductory section of your book that helps reveal crucial elements of the plot. So sometimes a prologue isn't truly necessary. Um, people just like the idea of a prologue and will put information at the beginning of the book um, that really could have been chapter one. So you'll see prologue there and you'll think, well, this is just a continuing part of the story that's in the right sequence, so I don't understand why it was labeled prologue. Um, so uh, sometimes a prologue isn't really necessary and, and can accomplish what chapter one would have accomplished. So we'll just take a look at that in a minute. Um, so one of the reasons why you would use it would be to outline important backstory elements to prevent the author from having to utilize flashbacks, memories, or conversations that might bog down the story. So um, it, the prologues can give this backstory immediacy and, and it can pull the reader in. Um, so if you don't want to have to utilize uh, flashbacks or, or sudden memories that, that are being shared um, in a conversation, sometimes that can be a little frustrating for authors because they have a lot of information they need to share. And it could be more exciting to put it in as a prologue and make it happen in real time. Um, so it's a lot, uh, it's, it's better in that sense because you're, you're showing rather than telling like you would in a conversation. Now, a lot of times the, this backstory needs to be peppered throughout the book, and I've talked about that a little bit, and it can be done in conversations, which is great because uh, conversations between the characters can, can build um, relationships and growth, and then the characters are, are revealing things about themselves. But if there's an incident or something that has happened in the past, long past that maybe even the protagonist doesn't know about, but is crucial to the story, things that we all need to know before going into it, then that's part of the reason why you would use a prologue, okay? Another another reason why um, is because it's a way to hook your readers um, and to leave them questioning why, why this certain event happened and how that's going to play into the rest of the story um, and how that's going to draw people in. Um, now be sure you don't use it as a gimmick because um, just doing it to hook your reader in but not really necessarily needing that information there. Sometimes um, readers can feel a little tricked <laughs> into it um, and, and, and there may, it may not be necessary. So we're going to go into three ways that it can be used and mainly it's, it's because the information is out of sequence. You're going to put information at the very beginning of the book that is out of sequence with the timeline or it's just something that is happening side by side that needs to be said first and then and then the rest of the story can go. So we're going to start out of sequence um, past. So a prologue can be used when material that you would want to include in the opening um, is out of time with the rest of the story and, and it happened before the actual story um, taking place began and that was supposed to be a period, my editor brain. Okay, so uh, for example, in my book, the in, in the in the Healer series, I use um, prologues in in three of the books. Um, so in the second book, I use it to reveal something crucial that happened between Tai and Amatsu, who is the demon god, before Hope is even born. Because that wasn't some I just didn't know how I was going to be able to put that into the story without bogging it down. It wasn't something that could just be told by someone's point of view. I wanted the event to actually be taking place where the reader could be drawn in and they can see what was happening between Tai and Amatsu and feel those emotions and gain their reactions from it because having Tai just tell it to Hope later on, it wouldn't have done that scene justice. Not to mention the fact that this scene happened thousands uh, or a, a good thousand years before her second life um, and about 700 years, I think, before her first, and I can't remember now that I'm thinking about timelines and, and years and stuff. Um, but it, it was it happened so many years before that it was necessary to put it in there um, because I just didn't see any other way to share that. So um, this information is crucial to the plot um, since it, it plays a huge part in why Ty behaves the way he does and how Hope acts, is accidentally killed in her first life because of this very moment that happened so many years before she was even born. Um, and then in the third book, I also go on to do the same thing. And I take um, 
I take the, the actual event that occurred that spurred Tai on to talk to Amatsu, I, I reveal what that event was in the third book. So it's, I don't even take all of this information that really needs to be told until the reader absolutely needs to have it based on what I'm revealing in each book and, and based on, I don't know, I guess it's a need to know thing. So you need to take your, your if you're doing a series especially, you need to take the backstories, figure out what would be better revealed in real time um, instead of just in a conversation um, and, and where it should be placed, you know. Um, does each book need to have a prologue? Does all of this information need to be shared all at once or can you um, separate it into different books? Um, so that is what I did um, and, and I'm going to show you a little bit of that in a minute. So out of sequence present. A prologue can be used to share something crucial to the plot that is happening now in the present unbeknownst to the protagonist. So a lot of times you're going to see this in, in thrillers. I see this a lot where the prologue will actually see a conflict or a problem happening right then in the present and then in chapter one we get the reaction of this direct um, event happening um, with the protagonist and a lot of times this this prologue is put there simply because it's from the point of view of the villain and then the rest of the book is from the protagonist's point of view. Um, now, there are other ways to handle it. it. I think that sometimes this particular one needs, you need to be careful about how you use this present prologue um, because it really, it's so close to just being chapter one, basically. If it's happening now in the present, um, a lot of times you don't really need that. It can just be chapter one, especially if you're going to be switching um, if, it, if it's third person and you're going to be switching points of view, like if one chapter is going to be the villain, the other chapter is going to be from the, the uh, protagonist's point of view. Um, so I wouldn't really use it too much unless you're just going to have one <laughs> scene from the villain's point of view um, and then put it right there where that, you know, the conflict is just kicking off and it's going to draw the readers in and hook them in. Um, now I do I do this in an interesting way with a book that I'm working on for Angie's um, series. She's a, a private investigator, um, or she will be in this in this book. She doesn't start out that way. And and what we're seeing in the prologue is um, what she sees when she touches someone and sees their death. And so in the in this prologue, we're actually seeing from the person that she just touched, their point of view of, of the events of how they're going to be killed. And so from we go from that prologue of the events of them being killed to chapter one, her her waking up, having, having dreamed this again and again, because it's been like a day or two later, um, and trying to figure out how she's gonna find this person because she just bumped into this person in an airport. Um, and was so shocked by the violence and, and you know, how this person had died um, that she didn't get a chance to find that person, couldn't follow that person through the airport. She lost that person and now it's haunting her. She's got to figure out how to find this person and save this family that's going to die. Um, so that is how I used a prologue in that sense. So it was just very different. So you really, it really just depends on how you want to present this information. And for me, it made sense to make it a prologue because this was going to be from the point of view of the victim. Um, and then we go right into Angie, and it's going to be from Angie's point of view for the rest of the book. Um, and it also helps to pull people in because we're seeing a family basically killed. <laughs> and But the good thing about it is that Angie, it hasn't happened yet, so Angie has a chance to fix it. Um, so that's that's one way that, I, that I've kind of made it a present thing because she sees that, you know, right then and there, within you know a two-day period we go from from her seeing this happening um, having this vision when she touches this woman and then she's trying to figure out how that she's gonna find this woman to save her um, and so another way is out of sequence future a prologue which is almost basically what I did um, with Angie uh, except for it just the the events of her seeing that vision happened right then and then and now she's trying to stop it um, so the out-of-sequence future, it's a, a prologue can also be used to foreshadow an event, catastrophic or otherwise, that happens at the very pinnacle of a book. Um, so director J.J. Abrams really loves doing this. He did this all the time in the TV series Alias. Um, and it's, what we'd get is we'd get a snippet of, of the series or, or of the actual episode, 
at like the very pinnacle of the conflict where we're just like, oh my gosh, she's tied up. Oh my gosh, what happened? How did she get there? How did this person, you know, why is she injured? So we're getting a little snippet of what has happened um, three days in the future. And then we go from that to, you know, back in time to the present um, where it will say something like three days previously or, you know, 24 hours earlier or something like that. Um, so J.J. Abrams really loved that. And funnily enough, he directed Mission Impossible 3. Was it 3 or 2? I don't know. I can't remember. I think it was 3. Um, and he did that in that movie as well, where we are opening with uh, Tom Cruise being tied up and his girlfriend is sitting there with a gun to her head and she does, in fact, get shot. And that's at the beginning of, you know, the movie. And then it starts over and leads us up to the sequence of events that got us there. And we're hooked you know, and yeah, it's a bit of a gimmick because it's, we're kind of tricking you, you know, we're trying to get people to find out, holy cow, what, what happened? What is happening? What events lead up to this moment? And now that she's dead, what is he going to do? Cause she totally died. And I think that was the thing that was crazy is that we're, we're actually seeing her, you know, we're like, oh my gosh, she gets shot. It's not like it led up to him, you know, the threat of her being killed. No, no, no. The dude pulled the trigger. And so now we're just like, what? <laughs> So, you know, you want to keep watching because you're hoping that somehow she survives, but you just don't know how it would be possible. Um, and, of course, they do, like, a whole twist thing to it and trick us a little bit, which is why I really like that particular movie because I thought that was very well done. Um, so that, that that's another way and another um, method for using a prologue. So, so ask yourself, do you need a prologue? Um, can I just call the prologue chapter one? If so, then you probably don't need a prologue. Probably don't. Um, do the readers need a lot of background to help them understand the story? If so, do it in a prologue in real time, you know, so that they're experiencing the, the events as they happen, whether it was past, present, future. Um, but do it in real time to prevent the rest of the story from getting bogged down. That way you don't have to take that backstory, insert it into a conversation and make this person talk about it as if it had happened in the past. Instead, you can write about it and pull the people in as it is happening in that prologue, um, which makes it more immediate and, and far more tense, um, I think. Um, am I writing a prologue just to hook the readers? If so, then ask yourself why you can't do that in chapter one. Uh, why, why can't you take whatever it is you're trying to hook them with and put it in chapter one? Um, does the opening need to be told from a different perspective? Um, is the opening something where you're actually taking something from the future and putting it right there? Do you have to do that? Uh, so just make sure when you're, you're deciding on a prologue that you're not doing it just to have one. Um, <laughs> make sure that you're doing it because there's information that needs to be revealed and you don't necessarily want to bog down the rest of your story, you know, that it's, it's information that you want um, to, to bring at the beginning of the book that they need to know before going into the rest of the story um, and, and make sure that it is something that is really interesting and not boring because if you have a boring prologue, they're, they're going to give up on the book before they even get to the, the real meat of the story, before you even start the story. So real quick, I just wanted to share with you um, where you can go to kind of get an example of the the different prologues that I've done for my books Which may or may not make sense if you haven't read them, but this is the second book in the healer series um, and uh, The prologue is just this really important meeting that um, the God of love and marriage that Ty had with the um, And his name his his God name is Musubi. That's Ty um, that he had with uh, the demon God um, so if you want to come in and just sample it and you can just kind of get a feel for what it is I'm doing here, um, you're more than welcome to. And, uh, so just check that out. I would also, um, it, I'm sure you have a ton of books on your bookshelf. Grab your books, take a look at the prologues in different books, um, see why they're using it, see why they're utilizing that, get a feel for how they're doing that. Um, I, again, and I always say this, I think that reading is the best teacher when it comes to, uh, different ways that you can write. Um, you need to read as much as possible just to learn to write and then you need to write. So read a lot, write a lot. That uh, That's an important part of perfecting your craft. So if you have any questions, please let me know. If you liked this video and you thought it was helpful, then please like it. And, and uh, if you're new to the family, then please subscribe. 
Um, also, if you have a prologue or an idea for a prologue, but you're not sure if you should use it, just put a comment below or message me on Facebook. I'd certainly be happy to give you an opinion, give you a little guidance on that, give you a few suggestions, um, and, uh, and, and help you out in any way I can. So uh, I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.